obirin mo ki omo de pe si ki agbalagba me ci gaba de yi ma rendina sojin kasan nan addu'a a ku leyin temi e ka bo sori eto wa eto yin eto obirin to dangaja wa ya fi tan chanta a dauka a matsayin dan aikin cikin gida ru wa ji da na ki zo ka bi ke puro mu fi ce ma ma kan nan tafe en ti hausa bar ko mu da war haka kini aye yodun ile ya ka man se lodo dun yuro mo nta you can't beat the rich Admission forms for the 2016-2017 academic session of the NTA Television College JOS into its diploma courses are now on sale. NTA TV College JOS is the only federal government-owned specialized tertiary institution charged with the mandate of providing high-quality professional education in television production, engineering, and journalism. It runs diploma courses in TV production, TV journalism, and TV engineering. Applicants are required to have at least five credits in English language and mathematics at SSCE, NECO, or GCEO levels. Application forms can be obtained from the college at Rayfield Jaws on payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 Naira in bank draft or at any NTA state capital station nationwide. Completed application forms should be returned to the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield Jaws, or to the center of purchase. For further inquiries, please call 080-655-8773. Nigeria Max Children's Day, President Muhammad Buhari assures on the protection of rights and privileges of Everybody children. sees that the system is fair and that the system works in the interest of the Nigerian people. When the system is fair, everybody buys into it. Federal government inaugurates high-powered committee to facilitate prosecution of high-profile criminal cases. And remarkable breakthrough on pest infestation ravaging tomato farms in Nigeria. Welcome to the Network News tonight. Happy Children's Day celebration to all the young ones in Nigeria. I am Ronke Kolawoli. President Muhammadu Buhari has assured the government and people of Nigeria Republic of enhanced bilateral ties, especially in the field of agriculture. The president gave the assurance while receiving a special envoy of President Mahmoud Isufu of the Republic of Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. The special envoy of President Muhammadu Isufu and Senior Minister of Agriculture and Animal Husbandry, Albeda Abuba, brought a message conveying, among others, the gratitude of Niger Republic to Nigeria for its continued support and cooperation, especially in agricultural development as a critical sector of the economy. President Muhammadu Buhari said the federal government will closely look at the message from President Muhammadu Isufu and work towards enhancing and deepening the existing cooperation and collaboration between Nigeria and Niger in agriculture. The president expressed optimism that with good rains in both countries, there will be bumper harvest and the specter of hunger will also be averted. He used the opportunity to congratulate the government and people of Niger on the successful conclusion of the country's election and the swearing-in of President Isufu for a second term in office. The Nigerian presidential envoy, Albeda Abuba, had told President Buhari that his country's leader, Muhammadu Isufu, is convinced that existing bilateral ties between Nigeria and Niger will continue to get better under the current leadership in the two countries. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, 
NTA News. Stay, stay with the president. The Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria has promised necessary support to Buhari administration in the task of deepening democracy for the benefit of Nigeria. President of the association, Mr. Unduka Obagbena, stated this shortly after an audience between President Muhammad Buhari and newspaper owners in Nigeria. State House correspondent Adam Sambo again reports. The interactive session between President Muhammad Buhari and the executive members of the Newspaper Proprietors Association of Nigeria held behind closed doors lasted more than one hour. Their discussions were frank and centered on the nation's fundamental problems of security, economy, and the fight against corruption being addressed by the Buhari administration. He thanked them for their support. Two, he asked for more. And then three, he told them that the country will be a lot better. And when the country is better, it's the media that communicates it to the people. It's uh, important to say that uh, the government and the media... While well, well, delegation said the federal government is working hard towards ensuring that there is improvement in power supply, build good roads, and have an environment that is investors-friendly. He, however, raised concern over the criminality being perpetrated in the Niger Delta region, which is greatly affecting the nation in so many ways. Leader of the delegation and national president of Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, Frank Jacobs, commended the federal government and pledged the association's cooperation with the Buhari administration. I'm and as far as fighting corruption is concerned, Vice President Yemi Oshimbaju said the nation is in a critical time in social development and a committee such as this is necessary and would, in many ways, be charting a new course for the criminal justice system. What is important is that everybody sees that the system is fair and that the system works in the interest of the Nigerian people. When the system is fair, everybody buys into it and it's not difficult. In the wake of insurgency, especially in the northeast of the country, the president said all Nigerian children should be rest assured that they have a safe haven in the present administration. As I said recently, when I received Amina Ali, the rescue children well, our det determination and commitment as a government to the protection of our children is unshaken. This government is resolute in our efforts at rescuing all the missing children girls. Some children spoke on their expectations from the government. I expect good education, most of them that don't have school bus, maybe they should help them and provide a school bus for them. I want the government. like all of you to please spend time in reading this constitution so that you can understand it. Senate President Saraki promised that the Senate will create an enabling environment for a sustainable future for the children. A cross section of senators also admonish the children. I think um, you are not no longer in the dark to have a good society where you can have the rule of law is very, very important, and to respect law. The Senate President, however, started the day with an exclusive interaction with several pupils in the FCT. Mr. Joseph shouts, you are not allowed to run on my trains. But really, he likes having children around so he doesn't get too angry with them. Happy Children's Day! Happy Children's Day! Seven every year is marked globally and in Nigeria as Children's Day, observed as a public holiday across the country. Children's Day is aimed at highlighting various challenges that young ones face and continuously find ways of defending their rights. Guests on NTS Good Morning Nigeria extract the rights of the Nigerian child, as reported by Gufan Shaji. Children below the age of 15 years constitute 45% of Nigerians' popular liberation is protect the rights of the child in the face of violence and insecurity. In Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTA News. Thank you, Gufan. As Nigeria marks this year's Children's Day, observed every 27th of May, attention is being drawn to the entrenchment of policies and programs that can protect them from all forms of violence. Mplanda Kwok reports on the celebration of the day in Abuja. There's a saying that children are special gifts and assets for nation building. However, in Nigeria, they are faced with challenges that include trafficking, child labor, rape, 
child marriage and in in Abuja, Uplang, Dakok, NTN News. Tea in the tone of the celebration, the wife of the president, Mrs. Aisha Buhari, has reassured Nigerian children that she remains resolute in her determination to champion their cause and that of other vulnerable members of the society. Mrs. Buhari stated this in a message at a reception in honor of children as part of activities. We have audio challenge on that report. We hope to improve on it and maybe take it on before the end of the bulletin. Meanwhile, Governor Abdullah Ganduji of Kano State says Nigeria. Government authorities and help will come. For anonymous reporting, call 09630-3250 to 5 or 0813-2222-106. If you see something, say something. Nigeria, unite against terrorism. This message is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. As the sun rises over the hills of Abuja, so too dawns a new way of life and exquisite standard of living. Enjoy your own originally designed and quality built home in the serene and secure environment of Sunrise Hills. Experience this uplifting lifestyle with breathtaking views of the city. Rise above. Sunrise Hills is unlike anything you've ever seen before. A new way of life is dawning in the heart of Nigeria. VAT, Value Added Tax, is a tax paid on all goods and services and remitted by the seller of the goods or provider of the service to government. 5% VAT is added to the total cost of goods and services in Nigeria and when remitted to government is used for funding development. The VAT you pay will be used by government to develop our transport infrastructure like roads and railway lines to continually improve our educational sector by building more schools and upgrading existing ones to provide adequate security and a better quality of life for us all. Pay your VAT. Make your contributions to the development of Nigeria. It pays to pay your tax. This message is from the Federal Inland Revenue Service. The Honorable Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Raji Fashola, welcomes African ministers in charge of housing and urban development, Shelter Africa shareholders, state commissioners for works, housing and urban development, real estate developers, professional associations, research institutions, academia and other stakeholders in the housing and urban development sector to the 35th Annual General Meeting and Symposium of Shelter Africa, a pan-African housing finance and development institution established by African government to support the development development of affordable housing and real estate sector in Africa. Theme, Housing Africa's Low-Income Urban Population. Special Guest of Honor, His Excellency, Muhammad Buhari, President, Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Date, Tuesday, 31st May to Friday, 3rd June, 2016. Venue, Congress Hall, Transco Hilton, Abuja, Nigeria. Time, 9 a.m. daily. Enumsa, Engineer A.G. Magaji, Permanent Secretary, Works and Housing. Better Germ Kill. 10 times better cleaning and all day freshness. 10 times better cleaning and gem kill for a healthy home. Dettol, endorsed by the Nigerian Medical Association. We are here to serve, and indeed, Nigerians would get the service they have longed for and which they rightly deserve. The leader today that we have in Nigeria is one the world has been waiting for. Nigeria is seen in a new and a different, very positive light. With what uh, President Mohamed Buhari is doing, our economy will be strong and resilient to withstand the shocks. He wants the best for this nation. We want the best for this nation. Our aspirations should be to put this country first and together we shall make progress. If we don't believe in our own country, nobody will believe in our own country. So we must make sure that we continue 
with the trajectory. We don't want to make a mistake of the past. This president has a singular opportunity to make that difference because the whole country is behind him. And by the grace of Almighty God and the sheer will and determination of the Nigerian people, we will come out stronger and more united than ever. Glad to know you're still watching the network news. And back to our earlier story where we told you that Governor Abdullahi Ganduje of Kano State says Nigerians should remain resolute that President Muhammad Buhari would deliver on his campaign promises to Nigerians as he marks his first year in office. The governor stated this in Kano when Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed paid him a cultural visit. Anthony Forsen reports. Abdullahi Ganduji said, The circumstances behind President Muhammad Buhari's victory to become President of Nigeria should propel Nigerians to have confidence that the President was elected by all Nigerians, hence his resolve to leverage on the massive support he received. Precisely what happened was the convergence of interest, convergence of commitment, convergence of nationhood, this is the conversion that brought success to the FEC. So in order to harmonize and also to satisfy the aspirations of these divergent opinions that came together to put us forward, the governor expressed satisfaction with the town hall meeting series initiated by the Ministry of Information and Culture. There is no better way than this exercise that we have undertaken. It's a two-way traffic. People are expecting from government, and government is also expecting from people. Lai Mohammed on his part said the present administration is determined to reverse the state of affairs which it inherited a year ago. And believe me, this government, more than any government, has been working very hard because this is one government that genuinely believes in the people. This is one government that genuinely cares for the poorest of the poor. For the first time we have a president who is, whose integrity is what is actually driving this government. He restated the federal government's position by appealing to Nigerians not to despair in the face of the present hardship, but things will take shape very soon. In Kano, Anthony Fosson, NTA News. And back from Kano to Abuja. Globally, the railway system is a major source of transportation and much more affordable. In Nigeria, the railway has been a story of the good, the bad, and the ugly. With the coming of President Muhammadu Buhari's administration in 2015, promises were made on railway sector. In this special report, Onyinaya Kaluoka takes a look at the journey so far. The railway service was the major means of transportation in Nigeria since the country's independence in 1960 to the 80s. It was much convenient and cheaper for commuters and haulage purposes. Long time, more than 20 years ago, from uh, Meduguri to Kaduna, it was a nice experience. However, lack of maintenance, policy inconsistency, corruption and management inefficiency were some of the problems that affected the rail system. Uh, don't forget this same system have about 42 people employed uh, during uh, the Shehu Shagari time. Uh, gradually, we came down to 6,000. Now we have gone back to about 9,000 plus almost 10,000. Naira. Once we complete the China Asian Bank, construction may likely start this year. President uh, insisted on the fact that we must commence construction because it will generate a lot of jobs. Industrialization in many countries can be traced to committed effort by governments on railway development, which the minister said the government is set to do. Behind me is a regular traffic hold-up along the Abuja Kefi Express Road on a daily basis. But an efficient railway system has the potentials to decrease this kind of traffic congestions. 
It's estimated that by day we should be able to do like 2,000 plus. Yes, at the initial up to. And over the next two, three years of operation, it will increase to five train bodies. Definitely reduce the traffic on the, on the, on the highways, which will prolong the life of the road and minimize maintenance costs. The whole uh, train system, what we've seen so far, it's a noble cause. Moving our transportation system one step further. There are high expectations from Nigerians that a daily trip across the country on rail will commence soon. Uyinaya Kalu Oka, NTA News. Precisely on Sunday, the Buhari administration will be one year. To this end, Nigerians have continued to express their views on the journey so far on the change mantra. Guests on Good Morning Nigeria who spoke on one year of the Buhari's administration called for more policy directions for rapid socio-economic development of the nation, as reported by Gufan Shaji. One year after the inauguration of the administration, and Nigerians are divided on their assessment on the performance of the government. Guests who criticized the administration said fighting corruption alone would not make Nigeria to develop economically. Let's think of how do we improve the productivity and efficiency of Nigerians that will eventually improve their, uh, their income levels and will make people less you know, um, likely to be victims of corruption, of, of lack. Let's institutionalize the processes, let's run our economy well, let's help Nigerians earn a decent living, let's stop the idea that we're a corrupt nation because as he pointed out, the British have heavens where they're receiving those corrupt money. It takes to Tutango. The British don't describe themselves as fantastically corrupt. So I disagree vehemently. However, the special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Femi Adeshina, was quick to point out that it will take quite some time to achieve the desired change Nigerians are yearning for. There was a time in Samaria that there was a famine <laughs> and people were killing and boiling their children. And the prophet came and said, by this time tomorrow, a loaf of bread will sell for 50 kobo. A loaf of bread that was selling for 500 naira. Did it oh, happen? God. It a happened. Of, a liter of petrol should sell for one naira. No, 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 no that, not necessarily. <laughs> but petrol will be available everywhere and people will be able to buy. He also urged Nigerians to remain hopeful and supportive of the administration to enable it achieve its set goals in Abuja, Gufan Shaji, NTA News. Nigeria's position in the international community has greatly improved courtesy of President Buhari's image worldwide. Minister of Science and Technology Dr. Gunaya Ono stated this when he visited the National Chairman of All Progressive Congress APC, John Odige Oyegun. Ismail Musa has the details. Apart from the present administration's effort in removing impunity from the nation's polity, fight against corruption and terrorism, which has gained local and international commendations. The federal government, Dr. Ogunaya Onu says, is on course in the delivery of dividends of democracy. President Mohamed Buhari made sure that uh, the rule of law is at head to and all those acts of impunity, arrogance of power, they are all now behind us. With the integrity and personality of President Buhari, the national chairman APC, John Odigi Oyegun noted that Nigerians now have confidence and trust in the government. Hard as conditions are, the ordinary man and woman of this nation backed the president rather than the strike. The party, he said, will work towards actualizing its manifestos. From the APC National Secretariat Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. In the meantime, the Ministry of Science and Technology says it has come up with a remarkable breakthrough on the current pest infestation that has ravaged tomato farms in Nigeria, leading to immense scarcity of the vegetable. Minister of Science and Technology, Obunaya Onu, who gave the confirmation, said the National Institute of Chemical Technology in Zaria, an agency of the ministry, has developed pesticide expected to be effective against the tomato pest by name Tuta Absoluta, made from locally sourced materials in the country. The minister who maintained that the ministry is always ready 
to provide necessary support to all sectors of the economy to promote national development urged all farmers affected to avail themselves of the opportunity to access the pesticide at the institute. Former President Olusha Gobaston Joe Kobain's President Muhammadu Buhari has received Chief of Army Staff Lieutenant General Tikri Buratai. Let's hear more as we join Vera in our Lagos Network Center. Happy Children's Day, Vera. Vera? Good evening and thank you for joining us in Lagos. Former President Olusha Gobasanjo has commended President Muhammad Buhari for restoring professionalism in the military that earned the nation respect in regional and global engagements. He stated this in Abiyokuta, Ogun State, when the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tukubrutai, paid him a courtesy visit. Defense correspondent Muhammad Abd Kadil reports. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo, who said he shared other engagements to receive the Chief of Army Staff, said he is proud of the military under the present administration. There has been improvement in training uh, and preparation uh, for going into uh, encounter with the insurgents. There has also have been improvement in equipment. Chief Obasanjo said his recent tour of Bono State was an eye-opener in the fight against insurgency. Fifteen months ago, uh, what was happening in the theater uh, was different from what was happening uh, at the time I was there about two months ago. And I want to uh, congratulate you uh, and the, the military generally, and particularly the Commander-in-Chief who have made it to happen. The Chief of Army Staff who was on operational tour of 81 Div area of responsibility in Lagos and Ogun State told the former president that the proceedings in counter-terrorism are well on course. The Corsi call dovetailed into closed-door meeting. From the presidential hilltop estate, Abeokuta, Muhammad Abdel Kadi, NTA News. Stakeholders from the public and private sectors, including some government agencies, met in Lagos to discuss full implementation of speed limiting device and its benefits to Nigeria. Ken Egbelewa reports that the aim of the meeting was to work out modalities for compliance among stakeholders. Speed violation has been identified as the major cause of road traffic crashes in Nigeria. This informed the decision of the Federal Road Safety Corps to introduce the implementation of speed limiting device as part of efforts to end road crashes in the country. The sensitization workshop is to create the much needed awareness on the relevance of the device and why its implementation is crucial. Deputy Corps Masha who represented the core Masha highlighted some of the benefits of the device, stressing that FRS will implement the policy through aggressive enforcement. Just to enlighten members of the public, more so the motoring public, we said this first thing will be for, will be for commercial motor vehicles, so that they also install this in their vehicles. If you look at our crash trend, speeding has accounted for 30 of uh, fatality and road crash experience on the road. Relevant stakeholders spoke on the importance of the device and how their organizations have been able to reduce road crashes. We will continue to intensify our campaign on compliance with Lagos State Traffic Law through enforcement and public enlightenment. Vendors need to have a way of meeting stakeholders to discuss on how they can acquire this speed limiter device. Season remains a source of concern for consumers. The reason behind this is the invasion of thousands of hectares of tomato farms by pest, which resulted in colossal loss in harvest. This has created massive shortage in supply, thereby pushing prices higher. If you calculate the amount they are selling tomato in, in, in Cameroon, it's not that too expensive. But transportation and all the stress you go through to bring in that to multi market will be very more expensive. You get like tomato from that end to the multi market about 38,000 Expert in insect control outlined possible solutions. 
It's an invasive species that emanated from South America. It's been all over Europe. We have to use integrated pest management. And the first thing for all the other states that we have not found them yet, we need to set up pheromones. Meanwhile, Nigerians have been urged to consider the existing negative economic indices as symptoms of a journey to economic recovery and stability. In spite of the current challenges the Nigerian economy is going through, we have a very diversified, strong resource base, and there's no reason for us to get depressed just because the economy is getting depressed. We have all it takes in terms of resources, as, and particularly manpower and skills, to take advantage of these resources, to turn around our economy. And that's business news this evening. Thanks for being part of it. The news continues shortly. This is a Lagos Network Center of the NTA. We have more reports ahead on the news from Abuja when we return after this time out. Don't go away. Mommy, don't worry, I'll sort this thing out. They don't call me basket man for nothing. Sister. Hello, brother. Papa is marrying another wife. Oh. I will come home and scatter that place. Hello. Daddy is marrying another wife this weekend. He came to the house, Mama. Tell him I'm coming. I'm coming. Lies. I'm coming. Driver, airport. In that day, you people, they are all coming. <laughs> you see, Mom, Dad, I told you everything will be fine. Get more for free on every 100 Naira recharge. Enjoy 400 Naira talk time to call all networks, plus 75 megabytes of ultra high speed data worth 300 Naira, which includes 25 megabytes data free to give someone. Dial star 303 hash to subscribe to Glow Talk Special. The largest data network, Glow Unlimited. What? Oh. Uh -uh. What are you doing? Stop! Stop! There you go. who identify and nurture the uniqueness in our kids. To all the unique children of the world, Happy Children's Day from Indomie. Indomie noodles, tasty nutrition, good for you. Introducing the new Five Alive Pulpy Orange. Where is the pulp? The pulp. Where is the pulp? goodness of real orange pulp in every dog. Where's the pulp? The new Five Alive Pulp in Orange. Now in your where's neighborhood. The, where's the, where's the Welcome home agents. This is your biggest mission yet. We've developed something entirely new. Easy Flex Evolution. Evolution? It changes everything the world knows about value. You now can choose between two plans. EasyFlex Data Plus, which gives you all the data you need, plus talk time. Or EasyFlex Voice Plus, which gives you three times the talk time and includes a data plan. No matter what you choose, you get the best of both worlds. This is powerful. There's never been anything like it with so much... Value. So what's the mission? There's some who try to keep this from getting out there. Your mission? Deliver Easy Flex Evolution to everyone in one piece. Suit up. From now on, it's up to you. You've been briefed. Thanks for being with us on NTA Network News. The Board of Directors of Legacy Pension Managers Limited has resolved to pay a dividend of 408 million naira 
which translates to 60 Kobo per share to its shareholders. This, among other resolutions, were reached at the 8th Annual General Meeting of the Pension Fund Administrator in Abuja. Joseph Johnson reports that the increment represents 20% over the previous year's dividends of 50 Kobo per share. The 8th Annual General Meeting of Legacy Pension Managers Limited, which marks the company's 10th year of existence, afforded the Board of Directors and members of staff the opportunity to review their operating environment in the past year, the financial performance of the company, and re-strategize for growth. The chairman, Legacy Pension Alhaji Lamiz Shehu Diko, was emphatic that the PFA is currently rated a low-risk institution with a credible capacity to generate and retain reserves. The fact that I am going to grow market is very significant. If we recall that, particularly in the financial sector, many of our bigger brothers in the banks have been recording actually substantial drops in their profitability. But we are able to not only sustain what we have, but improve upon it a bit marginally. Other reports presented indicate that the company, as part of its moves toward building an enduring franchise, now has a benefit tracker, which updates contributors on benefit applications on real-time basis. In terms of benefits administration, we have since July 2007, when the PRs began, we have been on a total of 25.47 trillion now, which is a considerable amount of money, uh, considering the fact that the money which is under retirees collected their pensions as time will do. The company says it has opened more service centers in all the states of the Federation. In Abuja, I'm Joseph Johnson, NTA News. And talking about religious matters now, the Deputy Chief Imam of Abuja National Mosque, Sheikh Ahmad Onilewura, has attributed the fear of Allah, forgiveness, tolerance and fairness as panacea for a successful leadership. Imam Onilewura stated this when delivering sermon at today's steward. Ilyasu Ali Yakub completes the report. Leadership is said to be an important element in regulating a better or more secure human life. It is also the process which mobilizes an individual or society to achieve the desired objectives which play an important role in a society or state. Leadership and followership in Nigeria have been with a lot of challenges which observers say is due to lack of trust from the followers. Today's Jumad message as delivered by Sheikh Ahmed Onilewura is in tune with the challenges of leadership in the country where he admonished Nigerians to imbibe the qualities of leadership for the actualization of a better society. The Imam also enjoined Muslims to take advantage of Ramadan and fortify their faith which will in turn inculcate in them the leadership qualities. The, the fear of Allah is the beginning of wisdom. If we fear Allah properly as a family, f husband and wife and children, with the fear of Allah, our family will be different from other families that they don't fear Allah. Likewise, the country, those who are leading us, beginning from Buhari and all of them, Buhari should increase his own fear of Allah. Questions of hardship, all we need during the Ramadan, Muslims Ummah should stand and pray to Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to is the situation. The deputy chief imam later led the congregation to the Turaka prayers. In Abuja, Ilyasu Aliyaku, NTA News. We now go on another commercial break. <laughs> Okay, guess what? The police force is more efficient and more proactive than ever. All we need to do is trust the police and partner with the police. I don't get that lot. God do it. The police is here to protect and serve you. All they need is your cooperation. They be one for my hand, but God do it. So I'm calling on all communities to cooperate with the police to ensure fast response in case of any emergency. Police na your friend though. If you no call police, who you want call? 
I don't change my name to God the way. This message is from the Nigeria Police Force. The production, distribution, and sale of counterfeit and fake drugs is a corrupt practice and a crime against humanity. This has informed several measures and strategies to combat fake drugs, including introduction of anti-counterfeiting cutting-edge technologies to detect fake drugs on the spot. These technologies are being deployed to all the states across the Federation, as well as the internally displaced people's camps. The President, Muhammad Buhari, and his team are committed to this fight. The federal government of Nigeria, in line with its anti-corruption agenda and posture, will fight a total war against fake drugs and other unwholesome regulated products in order to ensure that Nigerians remain healthy and well. Lend your support and join NAFDAQ to reach the country of fake drugs and unwholesome regulated products. NAFDAQ, safeguarding the health of the nation. Global Tidbits is next on our news tonight with Chim Duma Mundubisi. Union has won the African Engineering Award worth $37,000 for inventing the CardioPad tablet computer. The device does heart examinations and sends readings to a heart specialist. In Uganda, the High Court has sentenced to life in prison five out of the seven men found guilty of carrying out the 2010 Kampala terror attacks, which killed 74 people. The remaining two were given 50 years each. Similarly, Côte d'Ivoire's Supreme Court has rejected the appeal of former First Lady Simone Babu against a 20-year prison sentence. She was sentenced for her role in the 2010 post-election violence. In another development, President Barack Obama, while attending the G7 summit in Japan, has visited the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum, the first serving United States president to do so since World War II nuclear attack. Though he didn't tender an apology for U.S. rule in being the first to use nuclear weapon in the world, but he called on countries to pursue a world without nuclear weapons. That's Global Tidbits, Chimdema Ndubisi. NTA News. Kene Emagudike has the latest reports on Sports World. Over 100 kids aged between 4 and 17 14 participated in the five hole kitty as well as training workshop to mark this year's Children's Day celebration at the IBB International Golf and Country Club Abuja. Ladies' section of the club, which organized the program, believed the nation can make impact in the sport governed by the abundance of talents. This is to expose them to golf, particularly those who have not been playing golf, and also to give those who have been playing golf an opportunity to exercise this holiday season. The game is very nice. It helps you to take control of your anger issues when you get angry. Head coach of the Nigeria under-23 football team, Samson Siasia, has selected 20 players made up of 12 home-based and 8 overseas-based professionals for next month's one invitational tournament in Korea Republic. The list is dominated by players who featured against the Brazil under-23 in a friendly in that country two months ago, which Nigeria won 1-0, while two new faces, Emilio Ju Julius and Abdurrahman Taiwa, break into the team, and winger Xavier Godwin also makes a return to the team after a long absence. Coach Siasia charged those selected for the trip to see it as an honor. The stadium San Siro in Milan, Italy, is set to come alive Saturday evening when city rivals Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid meet in the final of the 2015-2016 UEFA Champions League, with Real bidding to lift the trophy for a record 11th time, while Atletico are aiming for their first ever win. Both teams met in the final in 2014 in Lisbon, Portugal, where Real won their 10th title with a 4-1 victory. With sports update, Kenai 